Are you thinking on the price is right or something like that? Yeah. Okay, since the ninth court of appeal, oh, first opening statement. I was going to go right in the first question. <laughs> Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Stephanie Hall, and I'm running for the Ninth Court of Appeals. I want to thank the Montgomery County Republican Women for putting this on. I love Republican women. I am part of Liberty Bells. I'm on their board, and I know from personal experience how hard they work, because they probably work harder even than Liberty Bells does for their form. But I thank you so much. Uh, just to give you a little idea about me, I am the very proud mother of two sons. One son is currently on an assignment for one year in Vienna, Austria, and he is counting the months until he can come back to Texas, and I'm sure he will kiss the ground when he gets off the plane, because there is a lot of restrictions there. My other son is in Fulcher, Texas, and he's an IT um, guy for a, a small independent oil company. And uh, he has uh, three grandchildren, and I have the best daughter-in-law ever known to me. So I feel very blessed in that. So I just thank you for the time that you had um, to have me here, and I will talk more about me hopefully a little bit later. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, the uh, backbone of the Republican Party, which is the Montgomery County Republican Women, the original Republican Women's Club. And I'm so glad that 21 years ago, Beverly, my wife and I, and our four daughters moved into River Plantation here. It's been wonderful. It's a whole little town. We love it very much. I'm Jay Wright, running for the Ninth Court of Appeals. I'm born and raised in Corpus Christi, Texas and uh, went to work there uh, prosecuting after I finished University of Houston Law School in 1985. And uh, after prosecuting there and running and coming in second place as a Republican in 1992 in Nueces County, he was Democrat then, I went into private practice and I came up to Conroe in 2000 and opened an office to be close to my in-laws. But I want to thank my wife, Beverly, who's seated here in the front row, mother of our four daughters and our one grandson. Couldn't do it without her. She's been wonderful. And I've been endorsed by Texas Right to Life because I believe in the protection of human life from exception to natural death. Thank you very much. Thank you. Since the Ninth Court of Appeals has appellate jurisdiction in both civil and criminal cases, appeal from district or county courts, tell us about the types of cases you have tried and tell us what makes you the most qualified to serve on the Ninth Court of Appeals. Um, well, as, as she said, uh, this particular appellate court listens to all civil and all criminal. I've had um, 29 years of experience practicing law in Texas, and I have done every type of civil case there is for sure. When I first started practicing, the first 10 years I practiced for a, a law firm, and we did commercial litigation, we did complex uh, wrongful death cases, and I've done everything from very complex cases in the civil litigation field all the way down to a dog bite case. So I've had a breadth of experience doing the civil. After 10 years though, I got a little disillusioned and everything was about money, believe it or not. And so I thought I needed to do more with my, uh, my uh, experience and what I was doing to help other people. And I happened to have somebody call me and say, could you handle, handle a family law matter? I never thought in a million years I would do that. I always said in law school, I'm never going to do family law. Whatever you say you're never going to do, of course you do. And so I did help that person, and that developed into me practice, uh, practicing on my own. I opened my own law firm. I still do a lot of civil, uh, but I also do family, probate, guardianship, anything that touches the family. But in the meantime, I also have um, helped on some criminal cases and, and, and done jury trials on those, but that wasn't where my life was going to lead. So I will say I haven't had as much criminal. However, I've had a lot of appellate experience in all aspects of the law. I do a lot of welfare or CPS law appeals, and when those are done, there are most of the cases I do have aspects of criminal law within them too. So I'm, I'm doing both at the same time. So I really do enjoy doing the appellate work, but I also enjoy being the, the advocate in all this too. But I do think I have the most experience. I also can tell you that I have service experience in, in being on boards of directors and things like that. So you already know that I'm going to serve you when I'm elected to this position. Okay. 
Well, the Ninth Court of Appeals hears appeals from any county court or any district court uh, where the case is tried and one party doesn't like the outcome of the appeal. Of course, the other party has to respond to that appeal. Uh, I have worked on over 117 state appellate cases. I've worked on federal appellate cases. I have appealed cases by a writ of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, but I think you have to also know what happens at the bottom uh, of the derogatory. But in the trial courts, I think that to understand when cases come up on appeal, what happens, you have to have some experience in the trial courts. And I have over 140 jury trials about half criminal, about half civil. Uh, when I was with the prosecutor's office in Oasis County, uh, I not only tried cases, uh, uh, tried to put people in jail, but I did a lot of the briefs also on the appellate side. When I went into private practice, I not only tried civil and, and criminal cases, I also did uh, appeals, which a lot of lawyers did not want to mess with an appeal once they had had the trial. And so I have, uh, have done appeals on criminal cases, family cases, uh, uh, civil cases, which is you know, usually construction, breach of contract, things like that. Uh, all kinds of cases that go in front of our Ninth Court of Appeals, and any court of appeals, the general jurisdiction. Uh, and so I think that my experience matches sort of what, because on my appeals I've also done about half civil, about half criminal. And I think that I can take my 36 years of experience in trying cases and working on appeals, and that's both state and federal level, and I can put that to work to serve my profession, my fellow profession, and my community. My philosophy has always been, what I grew up with, older lawyers, older, more experienced trial attorneys should be up on the appellate court reviewing what the younger trial attorneys are doing. Thank you. Okay, you're not done. Oh. You, got the next you got the next question. <laughs> Same question that we asked Mr. Tope and Maris. During the last legislative session, some reorganization plans were being considered regarding the courts of appeal in Texas. Uh, consideration was being given to consolidating some of the courts, which may have included doing away with and merging the ninth district courts of appeal with the courts in Houston. What was your opinion? What is your opinion of that proposal? Uh, well, I, I was shocked and uh, kind of outraged because uh, our system is, is a microcosm of the United States. Texas is so big, and different people around the state feel differently, kind of depending on where you were born and raised and grew up. And so the Ninth Court originated in, in Beaumont over 100 years ago, but it's based basically a southeast uh, of Texas rural type of uh, uh, thinking and a mindset. And it's very different from people that live in the big city in Houston or the big city in Dallas. Not so much in Fort Worth, but it is very different. And, and we need uh, courts that reflect the philosophy of the populations that we serve. And, and this was some type of a, a backdoor attempt by I don't know who, but by consolidating and the plan that they came up with was to consolidate into all the big democratic cities. So you would have had courts that were based in Houston, and in Dallas, and in Austin, and in San Antonio, and in El Paso. Okay, when has a Republican been elected in El Paso? Like never, right? So this, I don't know who came up with it, but this was some backdoor plan which would have converted all of our appellate courts to be Democrat-dominated courts. A very bad idea, and I'm told that they didn't get it in this session, but whoever wants it is going to be coming back to try to do it in the next session. And we need to be on the lookout. We need to let our state reps and our state senators know uh, from the grassroots, and that's the Republican women, we need to let them know, keep your hands off of our right. rural courts of appeals, uh, because they're trying to convert all of the appellate courts into left-wing Democrat court, uh, courts that will that will basically be supported by all the left-wing prosecutors that Soros and his group have put into these major cities, including Harris County. So I'm very much against that, and it should be stopped. Um, yeah, yes, I, I knew that that um, had happened. Thankfully, that uh, did not pass. 
but they are going to bring, be bringing it back up, and that is of concern. The reason that I would oppose this is really um, uh, another reason, is really a legal reason, too. I do want to first say that the Ninth Court of Appeals is probably the most conservative court in all of Texas. So from just us living in this area, we don't want to change that. We want that court to stay exactly as it is. We also want them interpreting and upholding the laws just exactly as it is. But the way I kind of looked at it was, I don't want any uh, courts to co start combining and creating less courts. We have 14 courts of appeals. We need at least 14 courts of appeals. Perhaps we need more. But the reason is, is because if you have a jurisdiction that rules one way, and you have another court of appeals that rules another way, that's going to be prime consideration for the Supreme Court to weed that thing out and to use their conservative principles to uh, uh, attack it and to give us the right conclusion. Because right now, we have a very conservative Supreme Court as well. And so if you take that away, that's going to take away time that so the Supreme Court is actually going to be able to say, yes, we're going to grant that petition. Yes, we're going to take that up. Yes, we have two sister courts that are disagreeing with that. So I have a legal reason for that. I additionally can tell you that in my own practice, I, I had a, 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 an appeal many years ago in front of the ninth. <laughs> Um, they didn't agree with what I was uh, arguing, which was fine. I kind of figured that because they're conservative, but as an advocate, you do that. And so another another court of appeals picked it up. Somebody else argued it, and they said, yeah, they bought into that. But guess what happened? By the time I got my next case and I thought I would use that argument again and go to the Supreme Court, the legislature beat me to the punch and they changed the law. So there's the show you can always advocate for the right thing. Eventually it will happen. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie, would you get one minute closer? Tell us why you would be the best candidate, the best justice? Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, I do think that, you know, I, I will be the best. I really do appreciate the law. It's based upon Judeo-Christian principles, and I, I, it's a, a privilege and an honor to be practicing in that, and I think that being a judge would, uh, would also accomplish that. Um, I have a deep faith in Christ. I want to continue that. I can make you two promises. I can tell you that I have prayed for every case that I've had, every client that I've had for the last 29 years. I will continue to do that and pray for those uh, the, anybody that would be involved in the cases I would have up on appeal too. And so the other promise I can make you is that I can already serve. I already told you before I've been on boards of directors. I've done all sorts of things. So um, you already know that I'm a person of service. I get that from inside. And second, I really know, and I think the most important issue here, we haven't really talked about it, is what, how you judicially interpret things. And that's really important. There has to be conservative principles. You have to use the certain um, uh, constraints that are uh, to interpret the statutes as well as the case law. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, what you want on the appellate level is someone that, that has experience, but also has a judicial philosophy, okay? Because the, the two things combined, because what you do on the appellate court is that you review cases and you, you uh, uh, write opinions interpreting statutes and sometimes interpreting constitutional provisions. And so you want somebody that's got the experience, who's been there, done that, okay? Uh, and again, I, 117 appeal cases, 140 jury trials. But on top of that, I believe that the Constitution protects and was put there to protect our God-given rights. They need to be recognized by our courts of appeals because many cases go up where the constitutional rights are at issue. And once the, our court of appeals decides it, 98%, 99% of the time, that decision doesn't go any further. It's the final say. And I have a a belief in upholding the Judeo-Christian values of our United States Constitution. Thank you very much.